Hello everybody, how is everyone doing? I hope you're having a very fantastic week. On this episode we're going to talk about the easiest side dungeon of Diablo 3. The Moral King's side dungeon. Now, let's talk about the core values of this build. So, the core setup, or core values, whatever you want to call it, are based on having all 6 pieces bonus of the cooking set as you can see i have all of them but i don't have the helmet so i am actually using the ring of royal grandeur to emulate that helmet on the kanesh cube but that's really unnecessary don't worry like you don't need a ring of royal grandeur for this you can just run with the normal immortal king's helm and that would be just fine that would be even better than what i'm about to use so let me show you what I'm actually going to use for this. First of all, a disclaimer, this video is going to be separated into sections. The first will be with the easy mode using some yellow gear, as you can see right now. There we go. And the second one will be the super mega duper easy mode with some very cool gear, which you can see on right now. So first, let's go through just the easy mode and then I'll get you to the mega easy mode, right? Okay, so for the easy mode, as I mentioned before, I'm running Ring of Royal Ranger as if I had an Immortal King's Helm and I'm running a Lyric Crown here just as a placeholder because there is no way I can delete an item from Kanai's Cube just like I have no weapon, I cannot have now a uh, non-existent armor piece in my kind of sorry so i've added something that will have no effect as you can see there is no socket there are no gems so the bonus from the rx scroll will not count also a second thing to notice is i'm running gemless so that's how easy this is going to be like i don't even need any gems all you need are six pieces or at least five and a royal grandeur to get all six piece bonus otherwise you can't even go into the set dungeon an obsidian ring of the zodiac is not necessary but it helps out a lot the bull cutlass weapons are also necessary for this way because we're going to run a rowing variation of it which makes it super easy because the swords give us 15 fury per second and when we're spinning with throwing, we get attack speed, which increases our damage, our regen, and our movement speed, which helps us get from one point to another. Now, why is that so important? Well, to get the six piece bonus, which is the most important thing for this set dungeon and usually for a set, you need to have Wrath of the Berserker and all of the ancients active and for that you need to have enough cooldown reduction how do you get cooldown reduction for that because there are skills that have a very very high cooldown so as the four piece bonus shows you you can get three seconds reduced cooldown from both wrath of the berserker and call of the ancients by just spending 10 fury Remember how we are getting 15 fury per second with this, and now as we're spinning, we are spending the 10 fury necessary there. So we're getting a lot of reduction, okay? And as the call of the ancients actually lasts until they die, and by running this, just by having those yellows there, it makes all the difference. So by running that, they don't die. So we just go in, pop them. And that's it, you don't even have to pay attention to that skill anymore. Okay, now, again, we are running this just to make sure. Also, as a second thing is, we are running Earthquake to imp our damage a little bit, especially for the moments we have like a lot of monsters around, we pop one of those, destroy them. When we have an elite around, we pop one of those, destroy the elite easier. Okay, so that's the point. Now. Let's talk about skills and paragons. For the paragons, what I actually did is I simulated having only 
a Paragon 200 character. So let's say you're starting your season, you only have 200 guns. So core setup with the core tab, uh -huh. going into movement speed. As always, every single character should go movement speed for the first 200 guns. Please don't screw that up for reals. First 200 guns, movement speed. Eventually you'll understand that. For offense, I'm going with cooldown reduction, again, just to make sure I'll have that up. I would, even if I took that away, so if you want more attack speed or more damage, more crit, either of them, also more damage, they would all be great. For defense, we're running with our biggest problem, which is all reses. Like, the Barbarian has armor a lot, but has very little all resist. So, all res, for starters, then you could go live for armor, and as the last one, when you're going from 600 to 800, you'd go life regen, right? So, all res. And for utility, I'm going with life per hit, just make sure to stay alive. You could actually go for area damage and have a little bit more damage there, especially when we are pulling in monsters and get the big pull. It's really good. Now let's talk about our skills. For the Call of the Ancients, I chose Ancient Blessing Rune because it gives us life per fury spent. We'll be spinning and spinning fury all the time, so we get some healing out of that. For her whirlwind, I chose Hurricane so that we can pull the monsters in. It would actually go for Wind Chair if you wanted to get more Fury. It's not necessary. You could go Blood Funnel to get even more um, uh, health out of it. You could go with Volcanic Eruption to get more damage. You could go with Dust Devils to try and get some more damage. I just think that pulling the enemies helps a little bit. Warcry, Veteran's Warning, Dodge Chance, so it kind of makes us not get hit about a third of the time. Helps staying alive. Battle Rage, we're going for damage there. So Bloodshed makes that so that 20% um, of the damage we caused by our recent critical hits actually affect all enemies around us within 20 yards. Helps kill all the pulls that we'll be making with our Relent. Wrath of the Berserker, we're running with Striding Giant, so that we take 50% reduced damage, which is great. And as we keep that up all Rift Long, we can keep all that damage reduction up. And I'm running Earthquake with Mountain's Call, just so that it has a smaller cooldown, which would be usually 60 seconds, so running that makes it shorter cooldown, makes it so that we can pop it more often and kill faster. As for our passives, we're running with Boon of Polkathos, that will get us smaller cooldown for both our Ancients, which shouldn't be a problem, and as I said before, we go in, we pop it once, that's it, usually. For our Wrath of the Berserker, those 30 seconds reduction will help out a lot again, and as we are running Earthquake on the bar, we also get this 15% reduction there. A Cheat Death, should, so that we don't die whenever we take fatal damage, again it's only for 60 seconds, more damage with Brawler as we are pulling enemies, and to just finish off the enemies whenever they go below 30 health. Okay, let's go. As an extra point, um, I am running my Templar with the Cheat Death, the Guardian skill, to help me stay alive even longer. This is not necessary, so you can even take it out. For reals, if you are running this build, as you call, like you don't actually need anything on the Kanai cube, you just need the helm there. But technically, this with an Immortal King's helm should be more than enough. You shouldn't actually need your follower, but as I am taking it along with me, just in case I have it zero gears, so no help from him. Basically, only whenever it's up, 
it might give me a cheat death, some healing, but that's it. So, no biggie on the tank part. To get to our map and go to our set dungeon entrance, you have to go to Act 3, Rooms of Session. Now, as we have movement speed when we are spinning, you can literally just start holding your right mouse button. We go in and we take a right turn right there. That easy. There we are. This is the entrance to our side dungeon for the Immortal King's Call. Okay. So what do we need to do to master it? It says you gotta complete both objectives. And both objectives mean doing every elite. There are seven of them. Using the 4000% damage bonus. Six piece bonus, Wrath of the Berserker, and Call of the Ancients active simultaneously. And our second primary objective is killing 150 enemies with the Berserker active, which should be all the time too, because we should not drop our Berserker. Okay. Now, let's actually say okay and go into it. Another side note here is that you can actually run your Wrath of the Berserkers on Numlock Trick so that you can pop it every time it comes out of cooldown. For those who don't know what Numlock Trick is, I'll be making a video and the link will be on the description and on the card right there, I think. Let's actually go into it. Alright, so let's get to it. You go in, you pop your ancients, so pop them, you pop your number two and your number one. Now your gnomlock trick, your number four. I'll be adding a gnomlock trick guide to the description in case you don't know how to do it yet. And just start killing stuff. Very easy. So the monsters keep coming when you're spinning, and that's it. Focus on getting like some nice bolts so that you don't waste time killing just one or two like I did in the beginning because they were isolated and I didn't want to leave them back so that I don't have to like walk around the whole map trying to find one or two monsters in the end and as you normally trick your Wrath of the Berserker in my case I've used our number 4 skill for that you guarantee that you'll always have that skill up Because this way you have the 4000% bonus active at all times, which will guarantee you get both of your objectives. Objective to killing enemies with Wrath of the Berserker, and objective 1 killing elites with the 4000% bonus. We have an elite there, which should come down to us. Again. Very easy to run, our paint for is there, just trying to look good for the camera. Remember, if this video helps you, drop a like and consider subscribing. I make videos like this every week on stuff Diablo related. Every Monday I make the challenge rift guides. So if you want to go in and do it right first time, drop a subscribe. You'll get notified as soon as I upload it. And I do upload it pretty soon. As soon as the challenge rift turns, I'll go ahead and do it. And then I just post it to YouTube. And you can check it, get the map to follow, the skills to spend, your resources on, and have a very good time at it. Instead of having my brain over how to actually get to those, sometimes they are difficult. I agree. Usually there is like an easy way, there is a fast way, there is a super fast way for these speedrunners and leaderboards, challenge rift. I like the easy way. I'm only doing the challenge rifts for the challenge rift cache and 
those beautiful bounty mats that they gave us for free. Almost finishing it. Three more monsters. Two more monsters. One more monster. And there we go. Finish it. As you've seen it, it's very easy running. You just have to keep your buffs up, especially your berserker, and hold down your whirlwind to get everything for you. Now, let's go check in how the super mega easy thing goes. Very super mega easy thing. Let's go there. Alright, as mentioned before, if you actually invest a little bit more time into it, you can get even easier side dungeons for you. So what I did was I took two Mind of the Earth pieces there, so that I get even better cooldown reduction for my Earthquake now. So it gives me Earthquake, Avalanche, Leap and Ground Stomp reduction. I only want Earthquake for every 30 fury. I spend that at the other second. So I'm getting some cooldown reduction out of that too. I have used gems. I've taken away my Leoric Scroll there and added a Mental of Chenemy to get Amp and Reduction while I'm channeling Whirlwind. I've added Master Schmidt's River for even more cooldown reduction. I could go for damage, but I'm sticking with cooldown reduction because I have plenty of damage. I've added a Flavor of Time just because it's a legendary amulet. I could have added anything there. Anything would be better than that, to be honest. There are no pylons inside the side dungeon. A Mortex Brace will give us all the runes out of Berserker, which means we get the 50% damage reduction that we had before, but we also get 50% more damage and a whole bunch of other things. And I've added a Skull Grasp. Although this looks actually pretty interesting, it's not fantastic, but it's got all that amp from the Rowind, great chance and damage. The key thing now is having all those runes. So, Laughter Fury, keeping us alive, Adux damage, keeping us alive, all that popping from crits, killing easier, 50% more damage, killing easier, and then every time we pop it, we do a big boom of fire, helping kill killing enemies even faster. Again, bad stuff, like no genius rolls there. Now, let's go in there and run with it. So, same thing, I'm just going to go in, say okay, pop my ancient, one, two, and no more trick, my number four there. Okay, and now we spin, that's it, same as before. Now, as you can see, they die instantly. I have so much damage now. They can do anything against me. And... My Berserker was already up. Okay, let me pop it manually. I think they're... Yeah, my normal lock was probably off. Sorry about that. My mistake. And again... It's super easy. Like, every time something dies, I get some extra damage. Oh, some extra cooldown reduction. We're killing everything. Quite easily, so you shouldn't have any sort of problem running it. If you gear up like I did now, like you don't even need the Might of the Earth items, like you could go for Mort Mortex Brace and the Skull Grasp, for example, and everything will just melt. And oops, I actually ran out of my Berserker. My bad. Watch out, that's why you should numb lock trick it. Well, you don't forget to activate that. You should not let enemies run to you when you have you don't when you don't have that on. Because if you kill okay, so I already killed that. My second primary objective, which is killing 150 of them with the bonus. I'm killing it's too. It's mega easy too. Like we had what two and a half minutes last time we dropped by. Now we have three and a half minutes. Just keep running. Just kill last two enemies. Oh, there we go. Completion with a two minute run. That's how easy it actually is. Okay. So, 
Um, that's it. I told you it's very easy, and if we gear it a little bit better than mediocre, there is nothing that can stop you, to be honest. So, if this has helped you, remember to like, consider subscribing. I upload Diablo 3 videos every week with the challenge rifts and periodically with other guides like this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a nice one. See you the next time. Bye bye. So, I've just finished going through the videos and I've realized that my eyes look a little bit red. I was not doing drugs, I swear, it's great. It's 4 a.m. I just need to sleep, okay? So, if you don't actually leave a like on this video, have something in mind. Not even death can save you from.